three year old boss they had left in workforce for three years? What was he or she thinking? I think she was proud when she gently let me go. Um, what does gently let me go? I've never heard that. She called me. Um, this is really about a week after 9 11. Um, I was making the t shirts and I was going down and volunteering at the site. Mm -hmm. um, I had lived in Soho so I could smell the smell and I was like, I have to do something. It's eating away at me. So I would go down there and I called her and I said, Listen, I got a lot of t shirt orders and I want to keep volunteering. So can I take, you know, two weeks off of work to, do, to go do that? Mm -hmm. And that's when she said, You know what? You know what you're doing. Fired. I love you. I'll always be here for you. Go. Wow, that's the most beautiful firing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I had been punched in the stomach. <laughs> but oh, so it didn't come across as gentle. It was gentle, but all of a sudden, my security blanket of my six dollars an hour or whatever I was making was gone. And it, it's not like there was going to be a lot of people hiring people during that time. I mean, you know, New York City was going through a lot, so I was like, can I do this on my own? I well, you had sure. no choice. I had no choice. So she did you the great courtesy of slamming it back against the wall. Yeah. Do you think if you had been able to maintain that job or go back to you, you would have had the success yet? Yeah. Probably not. Because it forced me to go, oh, I got to figure this out and I got to survive. Has there been a pattern in your life that what appears to be the worst possible day turns into the best possible opportunity? That has happened time and time again. Um, I feel like sometimes those opportunities now take a little bit longer to show themselves, mm -hmm. but I always know uh, on the other side of a really dark day or some really bad news, which mm -hmm. happens to every entrepreneur mm -hmm. daily, weekly, weekly. yes. Um, you don't get big and then all of a sudden all your problems go away and they actually get bigger. Yes, it is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so I always know that there is a silver lining on the other side and I just have to like persist and power through and something good has to happen. And how long do you power through? Let's say you have, a, well, maybe you could give me an example of some great disappointment in building a business. Uh, how long do you take to feel sorry for yourself? Uh, how long does it take you to get back up? And what's uh, your secret uh, to keeping the headset that you're gonna power through this darn thing because there's some on the other side? I think a great example is I had the apparel line. It ended up being around four years in, I was working on it. My margins were not there. Um, it was not growing in a way that had a huge amount of momentum. You know, after four years, I was still a stylist on the side to pay the bills. And I thought like, this might be it. Like, and this is not a great life. And I, you know, I can't eat again, barely pay my rent. Like, this is not something that's Here sustainable. Here we go again. Here we go again. And again, um, this was how many years into building your business? This was four years. Most people would think by four years, you'd be through the worst of the wood and that you'd be a little bit more on the easy street side. Definitely not. Um, I think navigating the industry, you know, again, not you taking the usual path. Um, it was hard and I wasn't profitable. And that was when Jenna actually came back to me and said, do you make bags? I'm doing a bag for this film. You know, I'm wearing a bag for this film and it's an important part wow. of the character. So I lied and I said, of course I do bags. <laughs> Don't yes, call it I lie. <laughs> you meant to say, I'm going to do bags. Yes. Just a slip of the, slip of the tongue. Totally. <laughs> so the, she, I made the bag. It didn't get on set. That was the last, you know, 1600. It didn't get on set because the producer didn't want it. FedEx delivered it two hours late and they started filming. No way. Filming. Yes. Oh my God. So that oh, was the last... Ouch. That was the last of the money and I had nowhere to go back to. I didn't have, you know, anyone with a, with a well that I could extract more funds from. And, um, I just remember saying, this is the most expensive designer bag I've ever had. I guess I'll carry it around. <laughs> so, cause I had had two made one for her, one for me. Uh, and you have to take a moment just to describe the bag. I'd be curious what was the first bag that was the first of many successful bags in your life? Well, it became known as the morning after bag. Sex and in the labeled it that way. I did. Good for you. At 26, Sex in the City was the show. And as someone who worked all the time, that was like the fantasy life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to have, you know, a night out where I might not come home. And <laughs> women have relationships with their bags. They're there for a lot of milestone moments. And that was one I aspired to have. Um, did not have it. But... Uh, I just thought, let's make this fun and novel when we name it. So I hadn't named it yet, but I, you know, it was a satchel. It was 
uh, faux bronze crop trim with brown canvas with this turquoise zipper. And like you meant business if you're going to be a night out, right? Yeah, totally. I'm here to have some fun and keep my work shoes on in case, you know, I go dancing all night. <laughs> it's a PG-13 version. Um, and so, but how did you get the name out? Because I think the name in selling that was instrumental. How did you get the name to stick? You're walking around with your new bag. How do you get people to start calling it what you want? Well, this is what happened. I carried the bag and I was in like, I guess I got to go get a job. I'll be a bartender. They make great tips. I'd already bartended a friend's party and made, I don't know, 400 bucks one night. And was like, now this is the ticket. <laughs> and the, I was stopped enough with the bag that I thought there's something to this. Women are coming out of the woodwork to ask me who designed my bag. And I showed it to a friend of mine who had a store in LA. I said, what do you think? She goes, I love it. I'm going to buy 12 pieces and I'm going to get a friend of mine at Daily Candy to write about it. Wow. And I don't know if you remember Daily Candy. Of course. But it had the power. Powerhouse. Wow. So if you got in Daily Candy, that was it. We were set. So we saw me and the editor talking about the bag and the bag hadn't been named yet. And she was like, what is what do you want to communicate with this? And we were trying, going back and forth. And I came up with the morning after bag. Just there on the spot. I'm going to call it the morning after bag. Well, we were like, is it the last, you know, we were going through different options. Is it the one night stand? Is it the, I don't know, last call? And morning after bag just felt fun mm -hmm. and a little naughty, but it would make you smile. It wouldn't be absolutely. Yes. So the article was called The Catwalk of Shame. Wow. And uh, it went out and they sold out. They came back and reordered and something. And it profiled your bag in yes. that article. Yes. The bag was the start. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And then not only did they keep reordering and it keeps selling out, but they were like, we're actually. They being the friend in LA? Yeah, the store. Yes. It's called Satin. And um, other people didn't approach you. I, th I would think tons of people would be approaching you place orders. Yeah, they were. But what happened is this, the owner of Satin was really smart. She said, I'm actually opening up a showroom and I'd like to represent you. So in the span of about one month, I went from selling just to the store to being in a showroom and, wow, you know, starting my handbag journey. Mm. And then you, in a very short order, built how many different designs for handbags? So back, I was trying to get my hands on that online. I couldn't quite find it. No, you can't because back then it was a fashion was a lot slower. Mm. So I had one style for a whole year. I offered it in 50 colors. Um, but that's all I had to worry about was just making really great color combinations. And then the next year the sales rep said, okay, you got to do another bag. And I was like, I do. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you one other bag. And it was, it was this beautiful thing that you could just take your time. Now we probably offer you a thousand different skews every three months mm. so then who creates i want to get on to the creativity yes. process for you but before that i just want to i had a question about this story when you uh kind of went into showing your bag through the showroom kind of like the back door in a way you, you reverse the process you were again uh, very much outside the box and i'm, I'm going to say because i know it's different uh, you'll have to help me clarify what was so different and why it worked so well but you were one of the first people to show a collection at fashion week that people could buy right then and there in a typical fashion week, people see the runway, they see what they can order, and they're going to have, what, a six, eight-month uh, lead time before they can get their hands on the merchandise. Yeah. But you showed it, every all your, all of your merchandise. Was it all of your merchandise, or was it a specific line? Um, it's definitely not all the merchandise, mm -hmm. but as we made that switch, we said, what did people, buyers who were buy, purchasing the product, like a Nordstrom, Saks, Neiman Marcus, what did they purchase? Mm -hmm. What did we purchase for our website and our stores? And between the combination of that, let's make looks out of that whole array. And what did editors and stylists who'd seen the collection prior like? Wow. And then you put that all together to a beautiful show, mm. um, optimizing all the things that everyone bought. So everyone wins. You know, when, when we had our See by Wear show at the Grove, you know, that was, you know, Nordstrom did $75,000 in one day just on our line. So wow. they got a lot of love, as did we. Mm -hmm. But what you was, were a genius about is thinking, let me deliver the merchandise immediately and let me anticipate that. Yeah. Were people reluctant or what are you doing here? This isn't the way the business works. I mean, did you get any criticism? Uh, did you uh, get enemies in your trade? If people said, wait, wait, you can't do that. We don't do it that way. Or was it just accepted and it changed the industry overnight? 
I think that it was a combination of the old guard uh, and the old way was starting to fail because of social media making everything available for everyone to see right away. Mm -hmm. Um, So the consumer gets a little sick of it. It doesn't feel special nine months later when they've seen it in magazines and they've seen it online and they're like, I don't need it. Or it's been copied by fast fashion uh, and ahead of the designer delivering it. So the customer actually just goes to a fast fashion retailer and gets the knockoff. So I think everyone was struggling of like, how do we change the system? And we were, I guess, fortunate that we announced and then a week later, Burberry and Tommy announced. And so it was taken more seriously that- put you in a serious club. Yeah. My gosh. We were like, yes. Yes, we oh, did we follow our did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a little bit of good luck, but good for you because it was your idea and you did it and you got out there first. Correct. Right. And did everybody follow? All the big brands started following? No one Did they have the capacity? If they yeah. wish to, did they have the capacity to turn things around? Like I think a lot of people wish they could, couldn't figure out what part of the cycle they were switching around and mm-hmm. it got complicated. And so a lot of people haven't done it. A lot of people have gone back to the old way. Mm. Um, but you stayed with it. We stay with it and we're toying with, you know, how do you, as we look forward, how do you offer the industry which has merit? How do you offer them what they want, which is they do want to see the future. They do want the romance and the and the anticipation. The, yep. And the exclusivity of I get to see something that no one else gets to see. Mm-hmm. But then how do I satisfy my consumer who wants to see it as well? So now we're like, are we crazy? We do both. Mm-hmm. You do know, you do both. We're talking about it right now. You might be crazy. Yeah. You don't think in building a business, you have always multiple choices and you have to choose between one road and the other? Or do you think it's usually prudent to slam it on the all fronts and see what, what catches on? I think we are starting to look at if it's financially makes sense. Uh, we have incredible partners and sponsors that help you know create these shows. And so if that satisfies a consumer hunger, let's give them that. And that is no skin off our backs and my relationship with the consumer and the surprise and delight of that is great. Mm -hmm. And then do we have a private invitation only for industry that they get to see what's coming? And so we're just looking at that right now. Can you afford to do it, you know? Oh, that's a big piece of it, right? Now, let me take you down a different path. You have kids? Three. That's a lot. How old are they? Eight, five, and two. Ah, it's a very young younger than that. Um, what about this? I almost feel obligated as women in business who have built big businesses to ask this question. I'm going to ask, and I hate it, but I'm going to get even and ask you anyway. Okay. What Ready. about balance? How do you how do you keep uh, yourself as a phenomenal mom, mom, which I'm sure you aspire to based on what you said about your mother. You said, I'm trying to raise them the way I was raised. And uh, have enough focus, energy, and passion left, or maybe even first, for your business. What do you do? I'm going to start with this. Balance is a mean word that was made up by someone, man or woman, to make us feel like failures. Because wow. if, if you go back and Say time, that one more time. It's so good I want to hear it twice. Balance is a word that was made up by a man or a woman aimed at women to make us feel like failures, like that we should have it. Wait a minute. I just realized. What? I'm so happy you said it twice. I've never heard that word balance applied to a man. Well, guess what? Men have never had balance either. So what Nobody makes says, us? No one. I, in fact, when I interview men, I don't say, what do you do for balance? Well, they've never had it. <laughs> yeah. Go back 10,000 years. They had to go fight the buffaloes and we got to stay by the fire. Right. Yeah. And so genetically, even looking from a feeling of the guilt that women feel. Right. Yes. Whether you work or not, you're feeling guilty. We yeah. only have 200 years of working really under our belt. And so we're not hardwired to go out and kill all the things yet, right? <laughs> I'm not saying I want those emotions, but yes, men yes. have never had balance. Mm. So who said we should have balance, right? Yeah. So I don't look at it that way. A, a good friend of mine who owns an incredible maternity wear company called Hatch, she coined the beautiful hustle. And I have to view it as a beautiful hustle. And... There are weeks, you know, where I'm, am I the best mom? No, you know, next week I'm not going to see my kids a lot. And I have very honest conversations with them about, I have to work a lot next week, but then we go on vacation and I'm all yours. And, um, so it sounds like a division, a clear division between your work and your home. A clear division. And I think it's an optimization. So when you have one kid, what are your rules around time spent away from them and play with it? See what's uncomfortable. It's, I, I think it's good to know what you don't ever want to do because then you can be like, actually, no, I don't travel for more than a week without bringing my babe, baby. Um, or then you have two kids and it's like, no, no, we're going to start meetings at 930. 
no one's going to, you know, die over that because I want to walk my kids to school. So I think you just start inserting these things and you can say, oh, well, she's the owner of her business. Of course she gets to say that. But I think women have to begin to demand some of these changes within corporate America or it'll never change. A little bit easier when you're in your own business. Are you thankful for that? Very thankful. But I don't take anything that I don't allow my employees to take. So um, I'm very clear with that. So if I get something, they get it too. Wow. Well, don't let my employees know. Because <laughs> I take 18 weeks vacation and my rule here at the company is no one gets a vacation but me. How? Well, I'm, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I might have to revisit what my rules are. I'm not quite sure I'm measuring up there. Right? Yeah. So you, uh, so all right, from anybody's viewpoint, you're the walking, talking example, Rebecca, of success as a female, as an entrepreneur, as a fashion designer. Uh, what are you afraid of? Hmm? Tons. Like what? You don't look it. You look so cool, collected, solid on your feet and uh, in your inner core. Barbara, if I, I don't tell I don't you think where it's I just an act. from, I don't think it's an act. Uh -huh. You know what? I'll tell you something that changed my life. That you could get the worst news in the world, and this is why I'm calm. And I just came from hearing the worst news in the world, which I can't share today. Um, there was a moment about two years ago when we were looking at um, with things happening with wholesale and the consumer not shopping, like, would we make it? And would the bank take everything, right? And I, two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. And I just remember going, you know what? They can't take my kids and they can't take my family. And if I have to start over, I will. And that, that like, what does rock bottom look like for me? When you, when I really stared at that, I was like, as long as I have my family and we're okay, then everything can go. And I think that saves me a lot. Cause I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? I have to start over. Maybe I have to leave New York, you know, but, but there's a certainty and security and I can do something and I can make it work. And I think that to me has been a savior because no matter how bad it gets, if you are secure and that you can start over again, then that's something that you can hold on to. And it's not the zeros in your bank account. It's can I create something from nothing again? And I think I could. Pretty well. So what I really have here today, much more dominant and much more impressive than a fashion design, is uh, someone filled with wisdom. Yes. And the three things that are going to stay with me are one, because I wrote them down, I don't have the memory anymore to retain things so well. But most importantly, because it's so valuable, is the idea that you're a mom three kids juggling the business, going through all the stress that typical business owners go through. And you can call that kind of balance or lack of balance, or you edit out the word balance, you call it a beautiful hassle. Hustle. Hustle. Oh, oh, I spun it. Hassle is very different than hustle. Yeah. Okay. Let me say <laughs> that better. A much better word. A beautiful hustle. Uh, the idea that a tactic you share with us, which you said you make a list of what you don't want to do. So smart. I'm going to get out of here and make my <laughs> list. I forgot to do that. Okay. I'm deciding as each thing comes up, so much better to have the list. Rebecca, recently uh, you started something entirely new. You founded something very important uh, named Female Founders Collective. What benefit did you hope to bring to female entrepreneurs through creating that organization? Is it a support group? Uh, give me your own words of exactly what you had in mind and what it actually did. Give me your give me in your own words exactly what it does. What did you have in mind to create? What did you hope to aspire to? So I think a lot of entrepreneurs create things out of um, not finding something in the market. And I, as a mother, as a woman, you know, I turn over my products to see what's in them. Is it non-GMO? Is it organic? Is it paraben free? And I was so frustrated. And may I ask you why that's important to you? Because I'm a health nut and I care <laughs> about what goes in and on my body and my children's bodies. I am not a proponent of necessarily everyone has to go to college, but I do think when you see some of these startups that come out of some of these colleges these people have the business savvy mm -hmm. and i think most founders start with a passion like probably many of the companies you interview and then they lack some of the business acumen yes so we're also providing education for these founders I see. 
So between those three things, the directory, the seal, and the education, mm -hmm. you know, my goal is, well, we have 7,000 members right now. Wow, and, that's amazing. And what period of time? About a year and a half. Amazing. And we have the seal on over 3 million products today. Mm -hmm. So my goal is that... And you actually put the seal itself, let's say this cup, uh, was produced by a it might be on the business. on the outside box that the cup came out right and do so good how do you educate the consumer to recognize it what does it actually say on the seal the seal says female founder collective and it looks like a seal like i'm sure you can close your eyes and mm -hmm. recognize the seal like if it's uh cruelty free it's a little bunny yes yes of course so hopefully with scale you'll start to see this seal recognized on the three million products and the you know that doesn't even count the websites and the storefronts it's on and the idea is also to help sell the product you you believe one yeah. is that that uh, broad knowledge more people will be apt to buy this cup versus the other with the seal well a study was done by this company called berlin cameron they found that 80 percent of women are more likely to purchase female founded companies if they knew how oh. so that was kind of my all right a study was done i i only you know basically purchase female founded and i seek that out um, and so could we get people to change their habits? So instead mm -hmm. of walking to Starbucks, no offense, let's go to Nina's Coffee down the street. But what do you think you are sitting in an unfortunate position uh, to really see the minds and concerns of so many female owners? What do you think, if there is one, what do you think is the largest concern or the largest problem that female owners have? And is it any different than what you would find, than what you would find with a male entrepreneur? Access to capital. That's it. Yeah. So you try to help these women find access to capital. And how do you do that? Because I know it's a very biased system against you. It is incredibly biased. Less than 3% of companies get funded. But I will say this. There's a trend right now mm -hmm. to uh, every business needs to get funding. No. And every business should approach a VC. No. Mm -hmm. um, and so women think that because those are the only women you're seeing on the cover of magazines, that that is the only <coughs> rapid funding. Mm -hmm. And so I tell a lot of these women, first of all, do you need money? Can you just have a profitable business that you have a great life with and you make money? Like whoever thought that that could be a good idea. Yes. Or can we get you access to, let's say, um, we work with Visa a lot and they, mm -hmm. they off, we offer a workshop in coordination with Chase, but alternative forms of funding. Is it a bank loan? Is it a bank and credit loan? Is it, and is it funding to start a business or one you're up and running and you need cash flow? Well, women experience both. We only accept founders that have a product and have launched. Mm -hmm. So we want to cover women that need to grow or scale, but we don't want you to only think it's venture capital money, right? Um, and so here is the landscape, whether it's uh, crowdfunding with iFund Women and, you know, bank loans or credit loans. We want women to understand the breadth of opportunity. Um, and so one thing we launched and announced is a partnership with UBS where we're actually going to be organizing cohorts of 50 women in New York, 50 women owned businesses in New York, giving them um, funding education, investment education, and then access to some of the UBS clients who are interested in directly investing. Mm -hmm. So by the time they're ready to accept that money, they know exactly how to deploy it. So we have so many listeners, female, male, but who really need help in exactly what you described. How does someone get in touch with you if they want to become part of Female Founders Collective? You can go to our website, femalefoundercollective.com, or you can DM us on our, at the Female Founder Collective. And it's that easy. Yeah, and then you apply. Okay, you heard that. Yeah. And she's such a sweetheart. I can tell you she's going to say yes to anybody. Am I right? Well, if you fit our criteria, you know, <laughs> I want to hear you say that. we got to have some standards here. here. <laughs> so let's move on to something that's very exciting. Uh, your podcast that yes. probably has the best name in the world. I'm jealous that I didn't grab that name. <laughs> and I'm going to see if uh, you really own it because I'm going to grab it if you don't. Uh -oh. And it's called Superwoman. Yep. Super Women. Super Women. Okay, is woman available? Because I just might talk about me and women. take that. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do a podcast. I'm just <laughs> going to talk about me. And you can do your super women, but I'm going to talk about me a woman. Be great. <laughs> so uh, you, you have a phenomenal name. Uh, what do you think is the secret in doing a podcast, giving attraction, and making one person recommend you to another? And what do you like to talk about? So I'll make it as short as I can. You don't have to. That was the longest winded question I've ever heard. <laughs> so we used to do events at our stores and I wanted to offer my consumers something other than selling you product. I really wanted to create intimate, authentic connections. And I thought I have access to all these incredible women. 
my customer should also be able to have access. So let me interview these women in my stores. Um, my fire code uh, ends at 92 people. Uh, I didn't feel like the format necessarily lent itself to social in a compelling way. And mm -hmm. I thought there's got to be a, way, a better way to do this and reach women all over the country. Mm -hmm. So decided on my own. And again, the goal was to help women all over the country. That was the end goal. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because these women were helping me, right? Personally mm -hmm. and growth wise and business wise. So I know they could be doing great things for other people. So decided to launch a podcast um, and again, took my mom's advice and was like, I'm going to figure this out um, and launched it at uh, the end of 2018 and was able to bring women like you who's coming on mine. I'm happy. I'm looking forward. And, um, you know, other just luminaries who have been through the hard and the highs and the lows and. Um, it's not the how I built this podcast. It's really like I want to get at the heart of, you know, some of the more vulnerable things mm. and what did they learn from that? And so it's just been great to storytell and it's been soul food for me. Mm. So it's just, just as great for me as I hope my audience feels, but I learn something every time. And I also have a feeling of like, I'm not alone. Oh, of course. Well, what's the reaction you're getting from me? It's been great. Um, I can't complain. I have an incredible uh, listenership. Is that a word? Yeah. Why not? You just made it. You're a trendsetter. Everybody's <laughs> going to use it this time tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, the reviews are my pay, right, for doing it. And so when I get a woman who writes in and says, you changed my life, I was going to give up and I didn't. And it's not me. I'm not really the star of this podcast. It is the woman I'm interviewing. Mm -hmm. So it's something she said or a story that she could relate to. And I think if that helps you in, in any way, then that's great. Well, it's not just starting the podcast like that is important, but it's also what you bring out from the person you're interviewing. It sounds like you're very good at pulling out inspiration. Yeah, you know when it got good is I stopped doing my research. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Well, there's someone in this room uh, <laughs> named Lila Mann who does all the research, and she's right now thinking, oh, I hope she doesn't follow that. I guess I'll be losing my job. <laughs> Don't worry, Lila. <laughs> No research whatsoever. So you just sit in the chair and say, so tell me about yourself. I think the the, uh, the native curiosity I then have, mm -hmm. because I don't know, mm -hmm. right, brings that out in, in the storytelling in the way that my, my listeners like. And you're not worried that your listeners might know quite a few things more than you know just in the very beginning and you might look naive? Well, I think... With most people that I'm interviewing at this point, I know enough. It's not like I walk in blind. I'm like, who are you? What's your name? So are you I, here for me? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, I know enough that they know, but yes. then I want to then find out the things that we both don't know. Like a great discovery. Yeah. yeah. And the guy who does, was it Roz? What's the guy, guy who does? Guy Raz. Guy uh, When I was on his podcast, I said, how do you get the best out of everybody? And you might be interested, you're in very good company there, be interested to know. He said to me, um, I don't know very much going in. There yeah. You go. There he go. said he was eternally curious, mm -hmm. which I think is what you just said in your own words, right? All right. So super women. It's not just for entrepreneurs, but if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, you're going to learn a lot listening into it, right? Or if you're not an entrepreneur. Oh, really? So you're trying to get people off the box to become entrepreneurs or just adore people who are really... Uh, succeeded in life and tried their best and made something for themselves. Correct. I think you can be any woman. You can be a woman who doesn't work or housewife or wherever you are. Working in corporate America, I think the podcast has nuggets that apply to everybody. So Super Women is going to give you some daily inspiration. Yes. Okay, got it. And last, uh, what's the worst that could happen? The most valuable word in assessing anything. What's the worst that could happen? Knowing what the worst really is and you're not in it. Correct. Three treasures that you share with us among your whole life story and I want to really thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. I wish uh, the listeners could see how beautiful Rebecca Minkoff is. She has the most absolutely beautiful skin and I want to rip it off her face and stick it <laughs> on my head. <laughs> beautiful smile, teeth, gorgeous hair and she's dressed just like the fashion designer she is. I am so jealous. I want to get you out of here as fast as I can. Here's the door. Get going. <laughs> Thank you so much. For Thank coming. you. I loved it. Love wow. Shuffling. You're a professional <laughs> shuffler. Thanks, Barbara. Okay, one more. And then I think it's definitely my interview. Oh, that wasn't a good one, but that's fine. Okay, wow. here we go. What's your question or category? Ask me. Whatever. Um, now, now. What's going to happen to me? 
Is that too broad? It's kind of broad of your business, your life, or it could be broad, yeah. Just we'll try it. Life. Life, okay, but that narrows it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're past. Uh-oh. I got yeah. a mm. The mm. Can I tell you the mm is yeah. you have very loving parents. I do. Very much in love with each other. That's the foundation. Of this is true. It's the first card. Ah, your dad was rather domineering. Did he make a lot of money? He was good at money? Not hoarding it, but making it? Uh, he made it, but I never knew he made it. Oh, really? Well, he is a, a very wise guy who knows how to make money. I don't mean wise guy like what? Wise man who knows how to make money. I yeah. agree. And he, uh, very comfortable in his skin. All right, I don't know what happened here in your childhood, but toward the end, this card usually shows up when there's divorce or infraction or affair or hardship, a brother maybe, an issue with a brother, uh, something that happened toward the end of your childhood that was um, uh, disruptive to your whole family. That's what that was. Could it be in the middle of the childhood when we moved and abruptly started over? Uh, no, I, well, unless it was financial hardship, but if it's just moving a house, no. So it says, I don't know, maybe there's something that, uh, because what it is, it's a defeat card. It's a, it's a card that says it was a battle and a giving up, some kind of giving up. Okay. okay. Oh, I know, but I can't talk about no, it, don't but I know. Okay, good, good, good. I'm just, I could good, be good. off because I'm just making this crap up, but okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the present. Ooh, the Ace of Wands, one of the best cards in the deck. This is what's riding under your body in your soul right now. Ooh, a lot of hard work. You're working a lot harder than you want to. Tedious, banging it out, banging it out, banging it out. Yep. It's getting a little too repetitious. Uh, in, the, in the middle of your present, that's very much on your mind, according to these cards. Okay. Ooh, lots of new opportunity. I don't know if this, this is a positive card, but it's on its head, which implies that you're probably not seeing it for what it is. All right. So this is the card of, this is the undercurrent of everything in your present. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not necessarily a money card. It could be a personal card, it could be an overall life card, but it's one of the best cards in the deck filled with opportunity. You see the little buds? Everything's yep. coming out yep. and you firmly have it in your hand. It's right there. That's who you are. This is you in the middle. It's like, oh, God, again, again. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if you're not delegating. I don't know if you're going through financial hardship, but you're worried about money. It's a lot of work to get to those coins, just as the figure it shows. And this is tons of opportunity floating through the air. No issue. Sunny skies, beautiful day, floating through the air, but you're not seeing them. They're all around you, flying, and you have many options. Okay, I'd be curious what's going to happen in the future. How many more do I get? Three more in the future. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. okay, good. Okay, ooh, a hoarder, a money hoarder. <laughs> I thought maybe that was a sign that I should have a fourth kid. No, this is a collect. No, this has nothing to do with child, children at all. This has to do with business top to bottom. Okay, this is you're going to hoard in a bunch of money. You're going to collect resource who, who, who somehow you're gonna <laughs> and you're gonna so make lucky. sure well i think so i don't know if it's i don't even feel like it's uh, your money i feel like it's somebody else's money that's going to come in and you see you're going to firmly the cards are sexless that doesn't look like anything like you think god this little short guy here with a coin on his head but you're going to come into money and not risk it it's not like you're going to take any of those things and go whoa 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 you're going to mm. I'm sitting on this money. I'm going to get it under me and I'm going to make sure I don't lose it. You're going to make sure you don't lose it. Ah, uh, King of Cups. This is not having to do with the money you're going to grab, but this is some future thing. You're going to get some guy who's made a ton of money come to you with an opportunity. And the guy isn't like a new opportunity. He's already moving in a direction with that opportunity, and he's going to ask you to get on the saddle. Okay. I mean, saddle, get the that, horse, get the saddle, yeah. Yeah. But that's a cup of opportunity. You've got a lot of opportunity. That's your. That's so exciting. That's your stuff around. Okay. You know? Okay, I'll take yeah. it. Ooh, the King of Wands. Now this is so interesting. It's almost. I feel like this is almost a brother. But, but I'm just saying that uh, this is an outsider. This is a stranger. You don't know. I feel like this is a brother. Uh, who comes with a specific idea of what you're going to do. I think you're going to have a lot of cash here that you're hoarding. You're not going to want to part with. <laughs> this guy is going to, from the outside, going to tempt you with an opportunity that's already working. So it's not like a put your money down and take a bet. You're going to, oh, this makes sense. This could make sense. Okay. And then your brother, 
I think is going to come with another opportunity that's going to be almost in opposition to this, almost like rivals, like lovers who are rivals, even though neither of them are lovers. But yeah, there's going to be a conflict of opportunity there. And now I'd love to see what other card you pick. And what's his last one? Since this uh, is to my see first where time. it goes. I mean, you're not going to leave me on a cliff here with these guys like conflicting. Wait, right, they're yeah, fighting. Yeah. I already work with my brother. Not I can't imagine working with him again. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We have a great uh, relationship. Okay. You know what? Can I tell you, you might have a great relationship. Oh, you work with your brother now. Well, yeah. this, this comes back later with something else, okay. I have to say. Okay. And he's not part of this. I see this as a solo, solo act here. Okay. But anyway... Here is the card of satisfaction, okay? But again, it's on its head. So whatever this is, it doesn't really tell me what you're going to do, but it tells me that you're going to get so much satisfaction out of what you do, but I want to know what the hell you do. Don't pick that one. Oh. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Right. <laughs> I just want to spook you. They're all okay. Okay. Wow. Lady again, I'm Loaded down. with coins. Loaded with coins. And why is it you're resisting the satisfaction that's so obvious? That that's not a fake card. It's right here. You can feel it. The woman, the queen of coins, right here. You can taste it. But you're not really wanting to see it. Maybe you're one of those terrible people that's never satisfied. Pick one more. Oh, my gosh. You know me so I'm going to run out of goddamn cards. Yeah. Ah, justice. Okay. That means you're going to come to terms with exactly what you got in front of you, and you're going to settle in and go, I got it. Right. That's an ending. That's All right. an ending. Okay. Thank right God. Woo. Because if you don't see an ending in total satisfaction and wealth and control, what would make you happy? Who knows? Well, you're going to get happy We're going to find out. You're going to put an ending. Justice. Love it. Thank you. Okay. This is fascinating. Only because you My got good time. cards. You got good cards. Okay, you well, you're a good that reader. Way. Let me show you some really ugly cards you didn't get. <laughs> Just the appreciation, conflict, dreamer. Let's see some. Good how do you ones. how do you get trained in this? I have no training. You shouldn't pay attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> you just make it up and you see the pictures. Yeah, I just see what comes to mind. 